Hockey Inside Out, brought to you by Videotron. Welcome to the HIO Show. We're coming to you from Studio B this week. I'm joined by Chris Nyland, Jack Todd, Mike Boone. Canadian season is over, Jack. What surprised yeah. you most about this team this year? Probably the last thing you had mentioned, which was the play of Carey Price. Uh, you never think that's going to be a problem, but to me it's been a bit of an issue on and off since he got here. He'd be hot, he'd be cold, inconsistent, never quite the player that you know he was built up to be, the thoroughbred we're waiting to see. I wrote a column before the season saying he was going to have a very good year and naming several things, him being married, maybe a challenge with Zach Pucalli being in the system now, uh, and Stefan Waite being the pr primary reason. He went way beyond my wildest expectations. Price was superb, start to finish, Olympics, everything, up until the moment Chris Kreider ran into him. That's right. Anything else Couldn't surprised you, Chris? You know, what really surprised me is they lost the first two games to the Rangers, and they didn't beat the Rangers. That's what surprised me. I, honestly, I thought uh, the Canadians had an opportunity that they blew. That uh, first game at home, not being prepared, not being ready. I don't care what happened in the Boston series. You want to play playoff hockey, you want to win the Stanley Cup, you have to be prepared to play every round, every game. And, and honestly, in the Rangers series, uh, they didn't show up a couple games. Any disappointments, Mike? Uh, not really. I think they overachieved on the season. What surprised me most was, was the depth of their playoff run. When, when the season began, I thought, you know, maybe they're a bubble team. Maybe they're going to make the playoffs. Maybe they won't. They were in a, in a whole group of teams that, that I assessed had, a, had about equal talent. But they went deeper, much mm -hmm. deeper than I thought. They and and coming and, uh, back after blowing that lead in Boston. That, yeah. that, you know, at that point, they, losing that game, they looked done. And uh, to come back to me, it was just... Disappointment. I guess you could zero in on, on you know, Vanek, neither Vanek nor Pacioretty had a yeah. great final series. Well, speaking of that, uh, Guy Lafleur was quoted in La Presse. Uh, Guy's never afraid to express his oh, opinion, yeah, Chris. Never. He says, it's not good enough to, he's talking about Pacioretty and Vanek, and he says, it's not good enough to be happy with a good season. You play to win the Stanley Cup. Let's be objective. Guys like Vanek and Pacioretty, you don't keep these guys on your team. They should stay home if they're not ready to pay the price. Your team will never win with players like this who fade when confronted with adversity. Your thoughts? Wow! <laughs> my, thoughts are, my thoughts are that Guy had a pretty good supporting cast when he won all them Stanley Cups. He was Damn a great player. Sweet. Don't take that away from him. He was a superstar. But he had such a great supporting cast. That team was top-heavy. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens of today are not top heavy like they were back then. You know, we look at the Kings, look at the Blackhawks, these teams top of the league, Anaheim. Um, Canadians aren't there yet, but that, I think that's a little much. Uh, I, I think Max Pacioretty um, had a pretty good year, you know, scoring a uh, great year scoring 39 goals. In the playoffs, he had a pretty good playoff season. I mean, scored a big goal in Boston uh, in, in Game 7. Um, yeah, would you like to see him do it every game? fact of the matter is, those guys can't score every game. No one can score every game. It just doesn't happen anymore. I know after the last game, Mike, on your live blog, you mentioned that uh, you figured Vanek has to be hurt. He wasn't hurt. How do you explain his performance in the playoffs? Uh, I, I really have no explanation. I, I still think there must have been some niggling problem with him because he, he was passing up shots. He was passing when you, when you thought he might be shooting. Um, he says he wasn't hurt. You know, are, are they under oath, these guys? You know, maybe he's thinking about his future is I think his feelings were hurt because he got taken <laughs> off the Pacioretty Day on A-line well, in Boston. Yeah. Boston did that to him, and then he never got back on that line. And in defense of him, um, you know, honestly, I think he should have been back on that line against New York. I, I think the team would have had a better chance to win. They would have got more offense with that line together. Brendan Gallagher can play anywhere. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to be on that line. He can play with any line. Vanek. Finally got comfortable with these guys. Boston series, I mean, a whole different hockey team, Boston. Top, physical, took that line out of, the, uh, out of the series, in a sense, early. And the coach felt like he had to do something. But really, I think Vanek, um, 
he, he kind of went in the tank out there. He, he was, he was he asked about who he liked to play with, and, and there was a conspicuous omission. He yeah. listed De Arna, he listed yeah. his old pal Briere from Buffalo, he yeah. even listed Lars Eller. He did not list number 14. Maybe yeah, you were so right. You already had a there. broken Minnesota and a strained <laughs> wild. <laughs> a strained I wild. Was, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think that was part of it was that his head was somewhere else. At the end there, when he complained about not having chemistry with Placanitz, well, you make your own chemistry in these situations, especially in an in a Eastern final. You go out and do it. it. The whole thing about Gallagher, the reason he can play on any line is he goes out and does it himself, and the rest of the line matches his energy. You can tell me Thomas Placanitz can't play hockey? I mean, come on. It, it was up to Vanek to do something. I agree with Chris. I, I would have left him on that top line in, that, in the final. But wherever he found himself, he had to try. There were several times, you know, he'd be in the slot and he'd kind of fan on a shot or pass on the shot. I thought there was something with the wrist or hand kind of injury. Didn't mention it. The thing that concerned me about Pacioretty, Chris, is reading comments from him about uh, the media is too hard on him. He says he doesn't read the media, but you figure playing in this market, you have to be able to have some thick skin, right? You've been through oh, it. Oh, yeah, you have to. And uh, honestly, he lets all that get to him. It's not a good thing for him to uh, constantly worry about what people are saying about him in the media, thinking guys are saying he's going to be traded. The fact of the matter is there were inquiries about him. Uh, being being traded. Other teams were talking to Bergeron about it at the deadline. I mean, if you're going to want a guy, you want a guy who can score goals some teams. And they were looking at making a deal. But, um, you know, I, I just, he has to put that stuff behind him. It's going to only hurt him. Uh, you see his quotes like in Boston saying, you know, you guys are the ones who who got me to turn it around and make me score, speaking in the media. And, but and that's really, totally he hasn't absurd. had a rough ride. He, he hasn't had guys, a rough ride. The, the biggest criticism I had of him was a couple of times I said I didn't like his sword sheathing move, move yeah. after a goal. Yeah. Yeah, you know? He did that after I, I, didn't I think he did after yeah. an empty He doesn't header, do it anymore. You know? yeah. So he stopped doing that. I know, Maybe know, he read I your article. Him. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't he's, read the media. <laughs> he's playing on a, on, a, on a cheap contract. I think that has to be his. But I'm he was sure coming off a, a major injury. I mean, the Canadians took a risk giving him that deal also when he came off. So it's sort of you can't have it both ways, right? You no. want the, the security of yeah, a long-term deal. Scored, and then he still scored 30 goals, and, you know, the potential to score more was always there. But Max, uh, again, uh, it is a good contract. You can't trade him. Mm -hmm. The contract's too good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back after a short break. Welcome back to the HIO Show. One of the big decisions that Mark Bergevin is going to have in the offseason is how much to pay P.K. Subban, Mike. If Dion Phaneuf's getting $7 million a year for seven years, what does P.K. get? How can you even mention him in the same sentence <laughs> as Dion Phaneuf, you know? If Dion Phaneuf at seven is, is the benchmark, P.K. should get 20. I mean, not, <laughs> seriously, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. No, I think he, he won't take a nickel less than eight. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I know what hats cost, man. He's yeah. got he, he a budget <laughs> for that. <laughs> and PK, but PK and you are two of the few guys who can pull that look off with that nice looking hat there, uh, Mr. Boone. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing GQ after this. <laughs> I, I've heard also that he might want to go short term and set up one more big payday. That might be part of the me and strategy on it. One thing with PK, Jack, you don't worry, like he's going to earn his money, right? Oh, this yeah, is a guy who yeah. comes to play every game. Yeah, like, you know, I still hear people ripping him, but to me, I've got all kinds of time for him. I don't care how much he moves during the anthem. I don't care about all these other little side issues when he comes on the ice, when he leaves the ice. When he's on the ice, you get everything he's got, whether it's 16 minutes a game, 33 minutes a game. PK, is, PK and Brendan Gallagher are the only two you can say with absolute confidence they did everything they could possibly do in any given game. And what if you, you were to create a player from scratch that, that oh would be ideal God. for the oh Montreal God. market... I mean, that's what we yeah, like He loves here, the spotlight. Yeah. And I, I heard yeah. Bob McKenzie say, he was talking about, you know, would you take, it was PK versus McDonough, which one would you rather have? And everybody agreed that, that McDonough had the more complete game right now. But McKenzie said the thing with PK is his, his ceiling is so much higher than anybody. He's going to keep getting it's, better. It's off the charts. Now, the other guy is Markov, Chris. How important is it to bring him back? It, it'd be nice to have him back, but again, you got to start looking at some of these younger guys, Bolio and stuff like that. And, and, and to go back to PK, I, I bet he's going to want seventy-six million That's, dollars. That makes sense. Yeah. I bet nine years at eight, eight ooh, ooh. five, yeah, uh -huh. whatever, eight one. Um, I bet he asked for his number. Yeah, Crosby but, did something similar. Huh? But again, um, you know, I just looking at Markov, it's got to be the right money. You bring him back uh, again. This team, I don't think. 
is where they want to be, and it's going to take some time. So you're going to have to win at the same time. That's the thing. So you need some of these players around. They brought in some bridge players they thought could help. Bria, uh, you know, Paros, Murray. Some of those guys are out of here for mm -hmm. sure. But uh, I think Markov, if you can get him for the right money and right term, two years, uh, five, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think the issue is going to be the term. Yeah. yeah. You know, somebody's going to offer Everybody four knows years, he's worth the money now. If mm -hmm. somebody goes four, do you bet with that? That, yeah. that would be the problem for me. Now, Mike, how important is it to bring Brian Gianta back to this team as a captain? In, well, in terms of, of leadership and maybe in terms of, of the room, you want him back, but my God, not at the kind of money he was making, and not for any any longer than two years, as far as I'm concerned. And this is the team that's trying. To I agree with that. Mm -hmm. At this point in his career, he's a third line player, yeah. And this is with the team some penalty killing and. Uh, his role has changed somewhat, you know. Yeah. I mean, you look at uh, guys whose roles have changed. Cabano, when he came out of junior, went mm -hmm. from a scorer to checker. Bobby Coppina, a uh, big goal scorer early in his career, became a third line, fourth line checker. Um, Brian um, certainly can provide that. I think he's a great captain here with this team. He's a great leader. He loves the community. He's not worried about the media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, he can play here. And his family and, settled here. Yeah, really he, like it here. and he loves it here. Listen, you know, who, you, know you could, you, you, again, he's going to agree with you. It's got to be term uh, and money. You know, does he take two years at two and a half, two million dollars a year? Is he going to settle for that? Now, Michel Therrien has one year left on his contract. He looked like a man who had just done an Ironman triathlon <laughs> by the end of that. Yeah. Uh, how long of an extension do you give him, Jack? I, I expect him to get three years. Uh, you know, organizations seem to do this, even though half the time they end up paying off the last year or two. What I really want to see with the Canadians is stability. They've got a good team there. I, I really like Therrien's business-like approach as an overall view, mm -hmm. even when you disagree with small things like is he playing PK enough, things like that. He's, he takes the long view. He's got a very business-like approach now more than he did 10 years ago. I think he's a fine coach. And Bergevin, too. I want to see Bergevin stay there 15 years. Yeah. You know, we've had enough. I, I came on this beat in 1994, man. I mean, it's every three years the coaches have changed, going all the way back to Pat Burns. Enough. Let's, you know, steady up here. Maybe you don't need to go to Lindy Rufflinks, but uh, yeah. keep the same guy around. I hope, though, with this coach, and I looked at game six in particular, when Alain Vigneault uh, got his team to play a really defensive-minded yeah. yeah. game, the Canadians never adjusted during the yeah. game. They kept doing the same thing. They kept stretching the winger up, long pass. You know, if you watch that L.A. Kings Chicago game, they all come back to the puck. They come up the ice together, and they pass their way through that mm -hmm. trap, mm -hmm. short pass their way through the trap. Canadians had a tough time. Every time they made the long pass, chipped it in, the winger and the centerman were coming up the ice from their blue line, and um, the Rangers got the puck, had their shoulders turned up ice, their heads turned up ice, and were going right by them. Yeah. They never adjusted in game six uh, to, to what the Rangers were throwing at them, and I, I truly believe if they did, they would have had a better opportunity to win that game. Yeah, now, I think the in-game adjustments don't seem to be his forte. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. You know, there could be changes next Changing year. lines, but... If Gala goes somewhere, you know, yeah, Gala well, may go to Florida, mm -hmm. maybe bring in a better tactician as an assistant coach. On <clears throat> now, next season, there's going to be even more pressure on these guys, right? This year, no <laughs> okay, everybody? <laughs> this year, nobody really expected anything, right? This is a bubble team, maybe make the playoffs. The pressure next year is going to be enormous because the only way they can improve is to go to the Stanley Cup final, Jack. Yeah, two strong seasons in a row, really. The first the first one of Terry N's career, they... they exceeded expectations in the regular season this year it's a big playoff run I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a slip back next year there these things never happen in a straight line they're still they, they're holes up front especially that number one center unless they can step Galchenyuk out there are a lot of reasons I'd expect a bit of a fall off yeah. next year the biggest need going forward power winger and a right-handed defenseman two two big needs as far as I'm I agree yeah. you know they need another uh, big winger uh, guy can score goals too. You know, Vanek, you know, if he was here, you're going to get those goals during the year. There's no question about it. But uh, again, Pacioretty, 39 goals. He needs some help in that area, needs some support in that area because certainly uh, if they're not getting it from other people, Max is going to feel the pressure and then the media is going to pile on him. <laughs> And then, <laughs> like we always do. Oh, yeah. Maybe they'll bring back Gila Fleur. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this season of the HIO Show. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. Guys, thanks for being part of it. It's been a lot of fun. Pleasure. Enjoy the summer, fun. everybody. <laughs>